Let's do a question to test our knowledge of the various types of scattering mechanisms. Which of the following demonstrates an enhanced signal with increasing ultrasound frequency? Is it A, Rayleigh scattering? B, specular reflection? C, ultrasound attenuation? Or D, constructive wave interference? Think back on all the different mechanisms that we have learned so far, starting from depth attenuation, specular reflection, and finally, Rayleigh scattering. The correct answer is A. Rayleigh scattering is the one mechanism in which you see an enhanced echo signal with increased ultrasound frequency. Since Rayleigh scattering is an acoustic phenomenon, or an acoustic scattering phenomenon, it describes reflection from small objects that have, wave, that have dimensions much smaller than the wavelength of the ultrasound source. And this phenomenon is used to our advantage during scanning of solid organs such as kidneys and liver. On the other hand, in fre increased frequencies will weaken the specular scattering or reflection and as well as depth attenuation of the ultrasound signal. Constructive or destructive wave phenomenon is not dependent on frequency to first order. Let's discuss the decibel notation. Decibels are used frequently in audio analysis and we want to make sure that we're on the same page in terms of the definition and usage of decibels. Decibel is the standard of comparing the ratios of two amplitudes or intensities measured in dB. For example, you have an incoming uh, signal, A1, and an outgoing signal, A2. The relative increase or decrease of this signal level is defined as 20 times the log, the logarithm of A2 over A1. A2 could be seen as output, A1 input. For intensities, we can also come up with a decibel uh, notation for relative intensities. This is 10 times the logarithm of I2 over I1. A decrease in signal gives negative decibels, whereas you expect an increase in signal will give a positive decibel. Finally, Frequently, the 3 dB point, point is mentioned in uh, audio analysis, and it implies a doubling of the intensity. Let's do a question. If an ultrasound beam intensity at a certain location measures 80 milliwatts per square centimeters, what is the new intensity with a 3 dB increase of this initial signal? Is it A, 77 milliwatts per square centimeter? Is it B, 240 milliwatts per square centimeter? C, 160 milliwatts per square centimeter? Or D, 26.7 milliwatts per square centimeter? Since we're dealing with intensity, we should make sure that we are utilizing the correct equation. The correct answer is C, 160 milliwatts per square centimeter. The proper equation in this case will be 10 log times I2 over I1. However, just note that a 3 dB increase, increase translates to a doubling of the intensity. Therefore, 160 milliwatts is the final answer. Let's do another question concerning decibels. If an ultrasound operator increases the output of the signal by 20 decibels, how much are the amplitude and intensity increased respectively? The choices are as follows. Is it A, 10 times amplitude, 10 times intensity respectively? Is it B, 10 and 100? Is it C, 20 and 40? Or is it D, a hundred times for amplitude and ten for intensity. The correct answer is B, 10x for amplitude, 100x for intensity. 
Recall that the decibel equation for amplitude is 20 times log A2 over A1, whereas for intensity is only 10 times the log of I2 over I1. Therefore, pressure amplitude increases 10 times for every 20 dB, while the intensity increases 100 times per 20 dB. Finally, we're going to talk about signal attenuation of ultrasound beams. As you recall, both the amplitude and intensity of the ultrasound beam decrease with distance d. Most ultrasound beam signal loss is due to absorption. The absorption component is significantly greater than the scattering or the reflective loss component. The attenuation coefficient, therefore, can be lumped for all three of these mechanisms into a single variable called alpha which is in the units of decibels per centimeter depth. Attenuation uh, in its totality could be measured as a product of this attenuation coefficient alpha multiplied by the actual distance of concern in centimeters. The resulting unit for attenuation is decibels. Frequency dependence of attenuation. The attenuation is proportional to frequency. In soft tissue, alpha is roughly 0.5 dB per centimeter per megahertz. In other words, if you have a signal at 1 megahertz, you expect 0.5 dB per centimeter, whereas if it's a 2 megahertz signal, you expect twice that attenuation coefficient becoming one decibel per centimeter. This table lists the uh, attenuation coefficient for various tissues. They range anywhere from 0 0.0002 for water to 0.5 for liver, 1.2 for muscle, up to 12 for air. Let's do a question to test our knowledge. Calculate the attenuation for an ultrasound beam at 1 megahertz crossing 20 centimeters of muscle. Recall the table that we showed just one slide earlier in which the muscle attenuation coefficient is 1.2 centimeter decibel per centimeter. The choices are A 20 decibels, B 24 decibels, C 12 decibels, and D 1 decibel. The correct answer is B, 24 dB. The total attenuation in dB is calculated by multiplying alpha by the distance. Since alpha, as we recall, is 1.2 decibel per centimeter, multiplying that by 20 yields 24 decibels. You have successfully completed this first lecture of the ultrasound lecture series. You may now proceed to the post-lecture quiz entitled Physics of Ultrasound Diagnostics. Once you finish taking the exam, you may proceed to the next lecture. If you have any questions or suggestions, please email. Good luck.